As I was praying and meditating on what to speak, the Lord put some things in my heart and I just want to share what God has put in my heart. I have a disclaimer for all of you. Don't kill the messenger. I'm only a messenger. Praise God. Hallelujah. I must speak the things that the Lord tells me to speak. Hallelujah. If we can turn our Bibles to Daniel chapter 5 verses 1 to 9 and 17 to 30. A very familiar story. In fact, this is one of my, uh, this was one of my favorite stories when I was, um, you know, when I was growing up as a child. This story for some reason, although there is nothing um, spectacular about it, um, this story for some reason always touched my heart. And I heard the Lord um, as I was preparing or as I was asking God to speak to me. I heard the words of God in my spirit which come from this particular scripture. So this morning time we're going to read some word and then we're going to go into what God has shared with us. So if you can bring it up on the screens, Daniel chapter 5 and I'm going to read from verses 1 to 9. And then 17 to 30, it is a little bit long, but please bear with me. If you have your Bibles, open your Bibles and let's read it together. Daniel 5, 1 to 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem. That the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God which had been in Jerusalem. And the kings of and his lords, his wives and his concubines, drank from them. They drank wine and praised the god, the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote, then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. The king spoke saying to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. Let's go to 17 and continue there of chapter, the same chapter. Verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God, O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he, had, he gave him, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was filled, lifted up, and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his king, kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. Let's go to 22. But you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this, and you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. 
And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hands and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tekel ufarsin. And this is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Verses 30, that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. A fascinating story, which I wanted to take the time to read, because what happened here was in one night, an entire kingdom was wiped out. All the powers of a kingdom, the kingdom of Babylon, which was the most powerful empire at the time. In one single night, God brought an end to the power of this empire and handed it over to another. Did you know that for God, one day can be like a thousand years? And a thousand years can be one like one day. Which means that God is willing to wait and be patient for 2,000 years for his children to be saved. But he can also come and end everything in this world and take his rightful place as king overnight. In fact, the word of God says that in the twinkling of an eye, we will hear the trumpet sound and the angels sound the trumpet in a twinkling of an eye which is faster than a fraction of a second. In the twinkling of an eye, he, they who are alive will be caught up and be captured and be raptured to go in to the heavens and be with God. And those who were dead in Christ also rises up and goes with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So when it, came, when it comes to the timings of God, God has a very peculiar fashion of doing things in our lives. It, um, the word of God says that there is a time for everything, isn't it? There is a time to be born, there is a time to die. There is a time to create, a time to destroy. There is a time to cry, there is a time to laugh. God has appointed things according to his beautiful time. One thing is very clear and for sure that we are at the edge. In fact, if you, if you speak or hear to any man or woman of God who is anointed by God and who knows the scripture, they will all agree together, whether they agree in doctrines or not. One thing they all agree is that we are in the final hours of the second coming back of Jesus Christ. We are in the final hours in his time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. But let me just go back to the story and make us just open up a little bit on what happened here and what was the problem that this king, what was the thing, the sin that King Belshazzar did that upset God so much that in one night his kingdom was destroyed. Bit of background, his father, the father of Belshazzar was Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a mighty king. He ruled the Babylonian empire at the time. And as empires and kingdoms used to do, they used to go around and capture countries and regions and bring it under their subjection. In one particular such time, the, the, the kingdom of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar came and they overtook the kingdom of Israel and they besieged Jerusalem and they took many young captives. Among one of those captives was Daniel. 
And when, um, when Nebuchadnezzar took these people captive, at the same time, he also did something. He went to the temple of God, that was Solomon's temple, and he took some vessels or instruments, vessels from that temple, and he took them along with him back to his home, hometown and kept it in the treasury, in the treasure chest of the kingdom. Did not use it, did not touch it. Those vessels that he took from the, the, the temple of God, he took it and he placed it in his kingdom, in the treasure chest. And that was something, by the way, that was prophe prophesied already by God. In Jeremiah chapter 21, the prophets or the real prophets it was prophesied to the kingdom of Israel saying that, watch out, Nebuchadnezzar, I have already handed over your kingdom to Nebuchadnezzar. You just have to surrender to him and be with him. That was the commandment of God. God allowed this thing to happen in Jeremiah chapter 27. We don't have to read it, but there was a king called Jehoiakim, I think, so we pronounce it. He was the king and he just had to surrender and go with King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, but these vessels that were taken from the temple of God, these vessels were not just ordinary vessels. These vessels were anointed. These vessels were holy in Exodus chapter 40 verses 9 to 11. Exodus 40, it says that the vessels were holy and anointed when Moses set up the tabernacle. That was the very first house of God. When the children of Israel left Egypt and they were on their way to Canaan, God commanded Moses to build a tabernacle. It was like a tent, a tabernacle, a place that had to be kept uh, moved but in that, in that tabernacle, there were vessels, there, um, there were instruments of worship, there were lampstands, there were different things that were used to worship God and to pray towards God. Those, all of those utensils were anointed and prayed over and they were holy. And it was these vessels that was taken over by Nebuchadnezzar into his kingdom. Like I said, Nebuchadnezzar did not touch these vessels, but when his son came and when he just started drinking a little bit too much, this is what happens when alcohol kicks into our body. We start doing stupid things. When this king drank a little bit of wine and he started getting drunk, he said, you know what, I, I'm not satisfied with these vessels that I have, with the cups that I have. Why don't we take the cups of gold and silver that my father got from Jerusalem, from the house of God, and why don't we drink from them? And so they brought all those vessels and they started drinking wine from those vessels. Not only did they do that, after that, they started praising their gods, the gods of silver, the gods of gold, bronze, iron, wood. So not only did they defile what was holy, they also worshipped and gave glory to the idols that they worshipped in. It was this thing that caused, in modern speak, it ticked off God completely because they defiled not only what was holy and they misused a privilege that was a precious thing that was anointed and holy and they gave glory to the gods that did not exist. Gods were made of silver and gold and wooden bronze and all those things. So what did God do? He judged King Belshazzar and removed him from his kingdom, from his throne. He put an end to the throne of Babylon, to the rule of Babylon, and handed it over to, Pers to the Persian Empire overnight. Overnight. One thing that is very clear from the scripture is that God hates idol worship. Well, let's expand this a little bit more because we may think, you know, how is this? Can be this be applicable to us? We don't really, you know, worship idols and all that. 
let's just look into the word of god a little bit more deeper but let know this one thing god hates idol worship but let's read first exodus chapter 20 verses 2 to 4 the first of the 10 commandments that god gave to moses I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall no, have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments." God was so particular that our dedication, our commitment, our worship, our service must be to the one and only living God. That that was his very first commandment. Him saying that you shall not have any other gods apart from me. So what was idol worship? The problem with idol worship in that idol worship at the time, and even now, many religions practice idol worship. It is nothing but creating an image of a person or an animal or whatever it is. It can be anything, an, an image of an object. And they believe that that is the God and they start worshipping that thing. That is the, that is the purest form of idol worship. But I want to read one more verse, taking us a little bit more deeper on what idol worship also looks like. In Psalm 115, verses 3 and 4. A Psalm 115, verses 3 and 4. But our God is in the heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. If you want to underline it, you can line that, underline that verse, that word which says, the work of men's hands. The work of men's hands. You see, idol worship can also be worshipping or serving the work of our hands. The work of our hands. What are the things, the works of our hands? There are many things in our, in our life. The works of our hands can be our houses. The works of our hands can be our careers. The works of our hands can be the money that we have earned. The works of our hand can be the vehicles that we own. The works of our hand is anything that you have taken the effort to create in your life. Children are not a work of our hands. Children are a gift from God. Children are not our work. It is the work of God. But other things that we have and possess in our lives, for which we work towards, for which we spend time towards, these things are the works of our hands. And anything that we worship or serve, we start serving the works of our hands. When that takes the place of God, it becomes idol worship. Anything that is the work of our hands, when it starts taking the time that we were meant to spend with God, when it starts taking the, 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 the commitments that we had towards fulfilling his kingdom's plans, when it starts chewing into our dedication and, and everything that we are to God, when it starts taking that time and starts replacing it a little by little, that is a form of idol worship. Especially, let's go a little bit more deeper. Especially, what did these, these people do in the kingdom of Babylon? They defiled something that was holy. They defiled something that was holy and they worshipped the idols. 
God said, you shall remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Of course, that those commandments, we can argue that in the New Testament times, that Jesus has fulfilled the law and the commandments. But those principles still stay. You shall remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We now celebrate the Sabbath on the Sunday. Most of the Christian world Sabbath, uh, celebrates the Sabbath on the Sunday. What happens when the Sabbath is defiled? What happens when our Sunday is defiled by the works of our hands? What is happening in the world? The world defiles the holy day of God and serves things that they created, whether it's in our houses or in our gardens or the work that we do to build a career for ourselves. It is a time for us to understand. To understand and to, complete, to, to reflect that the time that we spend on what? To understand and to check in our lives whether there is anything that I am worshipping as an idol. Maybe we are not bowing down in front of an image that is set in front of us. But sometimes unknowingly maybe perhaps when we start spending time in front of the works of our hands and that, st that starts taking the time of God away from us, we start giving glory to the works of our hands. And so that is what these, these, these kings did. They started, his father did the same mistake, but he, he was spared because he came to his senses. King Nebuchadnezzar, one day when he was walking, in the garden and when he saw his kingdom he said look at the work of my hands all these did not I create and when that pride kicked into his life it was true that he was the most powerful king on the earth but he forgot that the blessings that came to him were from God every day we must take the time to acknowledge that the blessings that we have in our life are from God God is the one who gave us these blessings and it is up it is completely up to him to for us for him to take it away as well because it will show in our hearts that I am not dedicated to the work of my hands that I am not dedicated to the work of my hands I am dedicated to God almighty who has blessed the work of my hands amen i remember the testimony of brother andrew when he was going through a situation where there was uncertainty in staying with in the in the, in the organization and they were doing the, so many changes within the company and thousands of people were being let go at the time you know we as children we are as human beings sometimes can be tempted to, to start influencing the managers or to start going and, and working a bit more harder or whatever it is that we want to do to try and please them a little bit more hoping that we can stay there and that is the truth we see that a lot we see bias in companies we, we see you know people who favor certain people because they want to keep their positions but I remember at the time the brother and I we, we prayed about it together and just, he just held his peace. I'm sure there was, uh, that he did not go around, you know, doing anything more than what he had to do normally, which was being faithful in the work that he was doing. And God honored him. God honored him in, in giving him the permanency in the role, which many could not. Do we know whom we serve or do we know what we serve is what matters in the end. Amen. I want to focus on the words that God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar, uh, to Belshazzar. When the finger of God came to the king and he said these words in the, on the wall, he said, Mene, mene, 
And Daniel interpreted those words saying, Your days have been numbered, mene, and it is finished. Tekel, meaning you have been weighed on the scales of God and you are found wanting. And Perez meant that the kingdom was going to be handed over to the Persians. I strongly sense in my spirit the Lord God Almighty who, who's, who created this world wants to remind us all, not just this church, not, this, not just those who are sitting here, but everyone, the entire community of believers, this is what he wants to say. Mene, mene, tekel, Yahweh. Mene, mene, tekel, Yahweh. Which means, the days of this earth has been numbered and it is coming to an end. Tekel, meaning the world and the people have been weighed on the scales of God and have been found wanting, fallen short of the standard of God. And Yahweh means the kingdom of this world is about to be transferred to Yahweh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The kingdom of this world is about to be transferred to God Almighty. That is the word of God to the church this morning time. These words were simple, but it is timely. It is a reminder for us that as we, as the clock ticks towards the final hours of the coming back of Jesus Christ, and deep in my heart, I have this feeling that I will not die, but I will be resurrected in my body when Jesus comes back. And I hope you all have that same desire in your heart. And that you're waiting with expectation every day, watching and praying, not letting our hearts go astray and worship something that is the work of our hands. Hallelujah. When we have this perspective in our lives, life is beautiful. When we have this perspective in our life, that yes, God has blessed me with a good house. He has blessed me with, with cars. He has blessed me with a job. He has blessed me with this and that. Children, but I do not serve any of these things that God has given to me. I serve God Almighty. Hallelujah. That is exactly what Daniel did in the kingdoms that he was taken a captive from his home country, taken to a foreign country and made to learn magic and astrology and all these things that I'm sure he would not have wanted to learn, yet he was faithful. And he found the time to talk to God every day. When times of trial came, there was a risk that his position as prime minister was going to be toppled. A rule came directly for him, saying that if you serve your God, you're going to lose your career. Not only your career, you're going to lose your life. What did Daniel do? He knew that it was God who was the one who blessed him with wisdom. He knew that it was God who blessed him with favor and strength. How many of us can attest that the blessings in our life is from God? The things that God has given to us is from Him. No matter what position I am in. And do you know this Daniel, he survived three kings. At least King Nebuchadnezzar. King Belshazzar and the Persian Empire of King Darius. And he survived two kingdoms, the kingdom of Babylon and the kingdom of Persia. 
and in the end he was the one who received the revelation also of the end times just like John the apostle so you see the person who served the work of their hands although was far more richer was far more influential was far more had everything in their life when that person focused on the work of their hands and started giving glory started lifting up this thing that he had created in one night in one evening he lost everything but this one man who served god faithfully and we hear and we read that in him was a spirit of excellence daniel never complained in fact we look at the career of daniel it says that people could not find a single fault in him do you know that you can honor god and do the work of god even while having an extremely successful career do you know that you can be extremely influential and god can make you the prime minister or the president of a country no problems while you still serve god faithfully and give the time that he deserves if you look at the life of king david the greatest kings of all times the one who ruled israel faithfully he had the time to write psalm to sing songs to praise god and to worship god this morning time the holy spirit wants to remind each and every one of us here be like daniel be like daniel serve and worship the king of kings faithfully and god will exalt you according to his plan and his purpose amen the word of god says that whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted do you know pride is from the devil pride is from the devil because he was the first one who was proud of himself lucifer was extremely proud of the position that he held he was extremely proud of the talents that he had he was extremely proud of the privileges that he had to the point where he thought and he believed that he did not need god anymore and that was his fall this morning time i want to encourage every one of us the lord is coming back quickly and also a gentle reminder don't get drunk with alcohol we end up doing stupid things when we get drunk with alcohol we you you can lose eternity with alcohol we can lose our entire eternal life if when we get into that and that is what happened to this king but let's worship god in spirit and in truth and honor him all the days of our life amen we're going to go into a time of ministry which means that we're going to allow god himself to minister to us in his way as we have always seen him do it and we're going to allow the holy spirit to speak to us for the next 10 minutes so get comfortable in the presence of god Amen. Why don't we rise up to our feet this morning time? Let us take a moment to examine our lives.
just a moment to examine our lives and to ask ourselves Lord have I been spending my time with the work of my hands have I been honoring you Lord have I been keeping your day holy Lord or, or am I am I always worried about the things of my life have I unknowingly unknowingly made an idol out of something that I have just talk to the Lord this morning time I feel so deeply in my spirit that the numbers that the days have been numbered I feel so deeply in my spirit that the time is not long for us the Lord waited for 2,000 years but it can all be over in the moment in a twinkling of an eye and if there is anyone here if there is anyone here who thinks or believes that they the life has been a life of worshiping idols of whatever it is then I want to ask you to commit your life once again to your heart to God and say God I'm sorry Lord I just want you I just want to honor you you know some of us we have prayed for things in our life and God has given it to us and now when we have those blessings have we forgotten God are we so busy that we now have less time with God have you wished that I did not have some of these blessings have you said that ah, I just wished I did not have these blessings in my life or or oh I wished that it was I had more time do you pray prayers like that let's talk to God just allow the Holy Spirit to move in him God is not here to condemn us but he is here to correct us you know he is our father he is a good shepherd he will do anything he will do anything possible to take you out or from darkness and that is why that is why he's been waiting that is why he's been waiting all these days hallelujah father god we submit ourselves into your mighty hands lord take this opportunity to talk to god take it the opportunity i know the spirit of god will speak to you holy spirit we allow you we allow you your presence your sweet presence to come and talk to us you are the spirit of truth you remind us the things that has been taught to us that has been given to the disciples you remind us those things lord holy spirit of god oh we worship you lord take control of this place god speak to our hearts oh god mm, lord jesus we surrender our hearts to you, God. We surrender our hearts to you, Lord. Oh, Father, we love you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lord, be the center of my life, oh, Lord. center of my life Jesus be the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it will always be you Jesus Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center.
Everything that I have breath, praise God. That everything that has breath, praise God. Hallelujah. With all that I am, I lift up your name in this place, Jesus. That there is no one like you, Lord. Everything that I have and I am is because of you, Lord. Everything that I am. Everything that I am is because of you, Lord. Once I was a child, Lord, today you have made, oh, you have grown, made us grow in stature, in wisdom, in possessions. We do not know what our future was lord but you held us in the palm of your hands lord how can we not thank you lord how can we not thank you lord i commit myself and each one of us into your mighty hands lord If you have an addiction that you're struggling with into your life, don't allow that addiction to take control of your life. It is going to take you to hell. If you have an addiction in your life, it to the Lord Jesus. And tell him to take over your life. Ask him for strength to stop. Come on, who is here that will come into your life and say, God, I've had enough in my life. I've had enough. I've had enough in this in my life. I want to bring my addictions to you. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Bring it to you, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, touch that person, Lord right now in Jesus name touch that person right now in Jesus name 
I command every addiction to leave right now. Leave, leave this place. Leave this place right now. Leave in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're bold enough, come forward and we will pray with you. Hallelujah. God has given us life and life in abundance. I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You do not belong to the devil. You belong to God. You belong to the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let this place worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on. Maintain a spirit of prayer in this place. If it was your life, give, you wouldn't, wouldn't you give it all? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray. I pray and I cast out the trouble that addiction that has come upon your life that you are struggling with in the name of Jesus I ask that you leave I ask that you leave no more no more You are free. Be freed. Be freed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God.
be baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Speak in tongues this morning time. Speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit come into your heart. And let the Holy Spirit touch your heart. Oh, speak to Him. Hallelujah. In a new language that God is speaking to you. In a new language that God is speaking to you. Riba labo shatanama nama. Riba so kamashianda labo. Hallelujah. Every chain is broken in this place. Hallelujah. Every chain is broken in this place. Hallelujah. Is there anything that is impossible with God? Nothing. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear. Is there anything that is difficult with God? Nothing. No. Is there anything that is difficult with God? No. No. Nothing is too difficult for God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Because we don't make this stuff up. Yes, but we yes. walk in the power of the living God. Hallelujah. Because we don't come here to sing songs and go away. We come here to be delivered. Amen. Father, we come here, Lord, to be set free. And we thank you because you have done the same to us, Lord. Father, I pray that you will give us the grace to follow you all the days of your life. That you will be the center of our life. That you will be the Lord of our life. That you will be our Lord and our King. That we only serve and no other gods. Hallelujah. God loves each one of you. Hallelujah. And he has set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you once more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. Jesus, I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you for ministering to us from the beginning till the end. I thank you because your presence was here and for blessing baby Kaylee, Lord. And the family. And I thank you because you spoke to us, reminding us, Lord, to take away things from our life that do not belong to stop serving things other than you Lord and to give our whole commitment to you and our whole dedication to you Father I pray that you will prepare us for your coming and if it is today Lord we are here waiting Lord if you delay then help us and give us the strength to wait and to watch and to be faithful children of God. We thank you for listening to our prayer once more. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen.